What is better than beating the Boston Bruins? Nothing. Nothing! Absolutely nothing. Maybe winning the cup. Probably. Probably. I wouldn't know. I'm back over here now, by the way. Hi, kids! Victorious puppies! Oh. This team is ruining my life! Why do I watch hockey? Stress really vocally! We can oh, and we oh, will! Oh, into this video, I'm ready to pass out. Haven't been able to breathe out of my nose for a week, but I don't care because the Leafs beat the Boss Bruce. How did the Warrior do that as his entrance and then fight a whole match? Woo! That was a lot of players' best game of the season for the Leafs. They needed that win so badly. Their next four games come in back to backs without John Tavares, and they win a rested game at home against. Give them their props, one of the best teams in the league. Listen, I don't like the Bruins, but I know respect. Here, look, I just hung this up. I just hung this up. See? That's me and Patrice. He's handsome and good at hockey, and God, he's so annoying! They needed that win. It wasn't pretty, but they got that win. Let's talk about it. And then, uh, uh, over a hundred shutouts. So while I shoot this, I never have any idea how long the video is gonna be. Uh, I assume it's really long. Trust me, the actual LFR, the reaction to the game itself, is not as long as the video suggests. Over a hundred people donated to a charity that I wanted them to... I can't breathe through my nose. Over a hundred people donated to a charity called Easter Seals. I've been talking about it for a long time, and I promised to give them a shout out. I didn't expect this many people to do it, but I'm glad they did. <sighs> we'll do that at the end. Now, a lot of focus in this game on the shots, and they weren't great. Boston outshot the Leafs on home ice 46 to 29. But you know, I can't help but feel like that might have been partially due to the fact that the Bruins got three power plays and the Leafs got nothing! Oh my god, are we gonna do this again? I think the Boston Bruins are the best team, at least in the Eastern Conference, when it comes to obstruction penalties that don't get called. There was a hilarious one everyone was reacting to on Twitter. I think it was in the first period. Zdeno Chara with a little bit of interference just held him up a little bit. Yeah, that's interference, man! I always talk about little infractions getting called when it affects possession of the puck. Well, not when it happened to Austin Matthews right before the Bruins' third goal. And look at this. Can I show you this? Look at this picture. Look at this picture right here, Marsha. Oh, yeah. It reminded me of a story. Uh, a fantastic story. I think it was from the 31 Thoughts podcast. Jeff Merrick and Elliot Friedman. Jeff Merrick was telling a story about an official in the NHL. I can't remember their name. And the story is actually hilarious. The ref, ha over his career, had gotten dozens and dozens of signed sticks from players like Gretzky, and he stored them all at his parents' place, like in the garage or something. He goes to get them years later, and it turns out that his parents had actually destroyed them, like sawed them off. I want to say for tomato plants. Maybe that's just because I'm Italian, and that actually happened in my family. And I remember listening to that story and going, God, that's so funny. That's such a good story. Let me stop you. That ref had autographed sticks. No, 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 sh 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 that referee, that official, that unbiased, supposedly, person who's supposed to call NHL games had sticks from autograph autograph sticks from NHL players. Like, if you're gonna donate them or, like, give them to a family member, that's still walking the line, but it's better. Look at this again. Look at this. Oh, yeah? How many sticks you got, 16? How many sticks? Oh, I bet your garage is stuffed. Showing off the Chara stick to his buddies. Look how long this is. Yeah, I got that after round one. And this is another sticking point I have, and just to prove that it's not a Leaf thing, I talked about this when Evander Kane got suspended for abuse of an official, that little tussle uh, between him and England in the Sharks-Vegas game. It wasn't that the ref had tackled him to the ice or any of that. It's that the ref tried to separate Kane and Engel and physically restrain them twice before the play stopped. And then I saw first period, Andreas Janssen cross-checks David Pasternak. You can't do that. David Pasternak turns around, punches Janssen right in the face. You can't do that. Ref restrains them. The play is still going. And Bruins fans, you should be upset about this because it resulted in an Alex Kerfoot breakaway. How are officials grab it, actually touching the players in play and the play's not immediately dead? That is a gross amount of involvement. Do not put your hands on players unless you are blowing the play dead. Do not joke around with them. I don't care because I don't trust you. Look at the game you just called. Nobody should. A reminder for this rant, just in case anyone takes it out of context. The Leafs won this game, by the way. You can't even blame the Bruins for it. You gotta give them props. Why wouldn't you take advantage of an advantage you've been given? Marchand's probably got jokes for days. You know, he's got the mouths of Daniel Chari. He's been in the league for 40 years. You know, he's got all the refs with his Instagram woo-peddling guru bullcrap. Oh, every time you point a finger, three more point back at you. How 
about this? Your team gets away with murder! Almost literally one time, you might remember. That Bacchus Marincian thing where Bacchus ran into Freddy Anderson and then Marincian put him in a headlock because, oh my god, why would Marincian fight him? He'd die. Jack actual oh my godding Edwards thought that the leaf should have been on a power play because he said that Marincian did the right thing and he's right because the Bruins do that every play man I don't know what the future holds I don't know how the Leafs are gonna do I don't know how the Bruins are gonna do but if they're gonna go all the way to the Stanley Cup final again they're gonna need some more sticks hey there was a hockey game five minutes and 55 seconds into the game I like that Andreas Janssen works it to Mar 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 what Mitch Marner played with Austin Matthews what never mind Marner gives it to Riley Riley throws it on tip for Matthews nope it went off Brandon Carlo and in Riley's first goal of the season hard to imagine because he had nine assists heading into this game in the Leafs are up one nothing. Almost exactly 10 minutes later, Leafs fourth line in the offensive zone. Given the Bruins fits, some people were saying Sean Corrali was the difference maker in the Leafs Bruins series when he came back. Well, they gave him fits in this one. Dmitro Timoshov, the best damn game of his NHL career, maybe of his entire hockey career, just being a nuisance. Gets him to cough the puck up, steals the puck, takes it into the slot, snipes, scores, Sally, Dim Tim! I don't, I don't know if he wants to be called that. Uh, the Ukrainian Swede, the Swedish Ukrainian, the Leaf scores to make it 2-0. Now all the Leafs got to do with a 2-0 lead is just play solid defense to end the pure Come on! Charlie Coyle, I forgot he was still on the Bruins, gives it to Jake DeBrus, that's so good. You know in Red Dead Redemption 2 how you hate Micah and you're pretty sure he's a rat? That's Brad Marchand. You know when Micah brings his friends and you're like, who's this one now? That's Jake DeBrus! That game should start giving me money. Jake DeBrus, his first goal of the season and the Leafs still had the first intermission with the lead, but again, uh, I know some people think that there's way too much stock being put into the starts of games and the finishing of periods, but man, do they give up those goals a lot. Jake Muzzin and Alex Kerfoot, Alexander Kerfoot, sorry, just a mess on this play. I love Kerfoot, by the way. He's so much better than I thought he would be, but he's a bit of an adventure in the defensive zone. Second period, Ilya Mikheyev gets taken off for holding, which is ridiculous because Big Stick Mick has never done anything wrong in his life. Minutes later, Nick Shore takes a penalty again. Par Lindholm? Is that where he is? Hey Nick, you're not doing anything. Go on cap friendly and tell me when Lindholm signed. Anyway, Leafs kill that off too. The Bacchus Marincian thing happens and uh, we've already talked about that. I saw a lot of talk online that Bacchus was shoved into Freddie Anderson and watching the play, I just don't think so. Which happens too much, frankly. And the Leafs made an issue of it just shoving guys into Freddie. I don't think that's what Justin Hall did on this play at all. He was sticking his hand in and granted he would have liked to have better body position but Bacchus is cutting hard to the net regardless. Hall, who I thought had a good game and I think has been having a good season, did that a couple times in this game, but luckily it kept the puck out. Here, Leaf fans, if it makes you feel any better, you like this stat line? Plus minus isn't a great stat, but somehow David Bacchus managed to be a minus two with two penalty minutes in six minutes and 42 seconds of ice time, which was the least out of anybody who played in this game minus the backup goalies. Andreas Janssen played 10 minutes and 36 seconds and he got injured, which by the way, I think I glossed over that. Andreas Janssen got injured. Blocked a shot, hit him in the leg, tried to come back. The Leafs held him out of the game. I am hoping and praying that it was a precaution. John Tavares broke his finger and it was on his top hand. You know if this was the playoffs, he'd still be in the lineup in excruciating pain, but he would be in the lineup. Andreas Janssen, it's October. Hopefully it's just precautionary. Martin Marincin takes a penalty after the 4-on-4. That was for some reason a 4-on-4, and it carries on into the third period. Danton Heinen has Freddie dead to rights. Roof said it's a tie game 2-2. Immediately after, Ilya Mikheyev on the half wall sends it over to Jake Muzzin. He puts it on. Bounce in front. Kerfoot! He's not perfect, but I love this guy. That sounds like the guy he was traded for. Anyway, Alexander Kerfoot with his third of the season. The Leafs are up 3-2. Listen, the best time for John Tavares to get hurt is never. The second best is October. Kerfoot is not the greatest defensively and he expects everyone in the bottom six to be great defensively and everyone everywhere to be great defensively. With John Tavares out of the lineup, with the next four games coming up, it's murder 
Kerfoot is going to have to be a huge part of this team and contribute, not just offensively. But man, so far, the grit, the speed, he's annoying. I love him. Marshawn tries to run Freddy. Jake Muzzin grabs him by the visor because he's amazing. Refs get in between them. Marshawn tries to spear Muzzin in the junk. Here it is. There he is. And after the game, I wonder if he signed it and gave it to someone. Probably, right? I wonder who that someone was. And guess who sets up the game tying goal? Brad Marshan over to David Pasternak, who has got the touch of death. Amazing bomb. Roofs it on Freddy. Who's going to stop that? His ninth of the season already. Tie game. We're going to overtime. In overtime. People talked about the pedestrian game that Matthews had. He played over 23 minutes, which is a lot for him. Marner played 21 minutes. Riley played one second shy of 26. I wished I had seen more of them too, specifically Matthews out of this game, but you got to give the Bruins credit. I, I've been yelling about the refs and everything. The Boston Bruins are one of the best teams in this league. Top five, probably. They had a hard time shutting down Matthews in the playoffs. That's because John Tavares was a thing. When John Tavares is not a thing, it becomes easier. But you could tell the second this trio hit the ice, they were winning this hockey game. All over time, you could tell the Leafs were afraid to go three deep. They were afraid not to have a guy back at the blue line. These guys just attacked. Marshawn picks off Matthews. This game is done. You're not picking me off. He goes for a little walk. Riley attacks the net. I know he's a defender, but he is an undercover Gronk. Marner gets into one-time position. Rister! Yeah! This is the player that Mitch Marner is. Look at this. Amidst the camera flash and flailing hands, we were all like, Mitch Marner, overtime hero. He knew right away that puck hit Morgan Riley, and he couldn't have been happier that it wasn't him that scored it. He doesn't care. Marner doesn't need to be the overtime hero. The Leafs won! The leadership core of this team, man, I think it was necessary that Tavares got the C, or someone got the C, but I think this summer, uh, uh, obviously the contract talks sucked. John Tavares is the stoic leader of this team. Morgan Riley is like angry determination. Austin Matthews has that swagger. Mitch Marner is the beating heart of a fan base. It's not the most analytical thing to say, but earlier in the season we were all like, oh, that line's not working. But after the way the summer went, I know he got his money, but you could tell Marner was a little hurt. Or at very least, not quite himself. That doesn't dismiss anyone's opinion about the contract saga or whatever. It's just the truth. He didn't look right. But this guy's sponsored by Red Bull. I'm hopped up on Mountain Dew. He's got to play like a first grader who had nothing but pixie sticks for lunch. And look at this. Look at this kid's face. Look at him. You don't think He's fired up! You don't think that the kid is back? I had a few people tweeting me the A team. Marner with an A, Riley with an A, Matthews with an A, and they get the job done in this one. Huge, huge two points. As gritty a win as the Leafs have mustered this season. This is where I usually do LFR questions. Uh, I can't. Last night after the game, when we all thought Mitch Marner scored the overtime winner, I said anyone who donates at least $16 to Easter Seals through my team, Rachel's Raiders, uh, is going to get a shout out in this video. I will woke up to 140 emails. I think you've raised at least $3,000 since the puck went in, and then there was also a donation of $2,000 before that, so let me start. Let the shoutouts commence. I know I already said you, but I don't care. $2,500. Charles Huber, Sean Reeves, Brittany Andrews, Will O'Brien, Christian Jacobson, Colin Zink, I think I made fun of your name last time, I can't remember, Raphael Jacine, Cheryl Zeis, Anonymous, Brent Brendan Ballo, Tim Keller, Karen J, can you tell my BF James to get an oil change? James, get an oil change! Joseph Caruso, Dwayne Schaefer, Adam Zgraja, Jackie Petovar, Pete James, Anonymous again, thank you for your generosity, and Hingle McCringleberry, <laughs> Eddie Martins, Nick Gould, $2,000, Nick Gould, Shlomo Jessen, Scout Lahash, Connor Reed, Keelan Ellis, Jordan McIntosh, Luke McGrath, Connor Lynch, Joseph Butcher, Stuart Grange, and Anonymous, my goodness, you just keep giving, don't you? Uh, Sandeep Sharma, Nathan Chow, Robert Bertrand, Nathan Weber, Luke, oh God, Lucas Burn, Lucas, Lucas, uh, Mike Houlihan, Daryl Brewer, hey Daryl, what's up? Scott Morton, Evan Huber, what it do, baby boo? Pat. Brousseau, Anonymous, you just keep giving! Alexis Tediello, I'm Italian, I'm ashamed. Robert Parker, Kyle Lewis, Jordan Turtle, that's not your name. I th actually, I think I went to high school with the turtle. Samantha Hope, Aaron Pickering, Yesenia Cruz, 
Matthew Chung, Ju Young Park, Bill Wilson, Sean Rooney, Katie Hutton, Cameron McLean, Melissa Baldock, Tyler Sage, Brendan Taylor, Austin Evans, Shelby Hinsey, Zachary Greenham, Jarrett Williams, Grace Dion, Sean Lonergan, Anonymous again! Oh my god! You're a top fundraiser, Ann! Ben Hodgson, Jesse Monroe, Anonymous! Stop it! Justin Wiebe, Neil Walsh, Jay Neil, Jared Smith, Andrew McGovern, Neil Marcillo, you can tell I didn't read through these beforehand, Ali Rodman, Cheyenne Mangte, Joe Sue, Grace Brown, Jared Mallinson, Anonymous, Andrew Tibroy, Harley Collaro, Taylor Vaughn, I'm getting tired, man, Nicholas St Stabile, Spencer Voss, Mac Henley, Hey Stripes on YouTube, that's a good way to get a plug, I like it. A lot of you donated $44 when you realized it was Riley, I like that. Ryan Kinghorn, Trevor Scotch, Woo. James Ely, I always like, I don't know, I like Scotch. Brian Big League Chew, Gary Silkwood, Alexis Argyris, Aguirus, Alexis Aguirus, Matthew Wilkins, Anonymous, Liliana Feisch, Rye Easton, I went to that school. David Morissuti, Kevin Tran, Trent Piersick, Piersick, Kaylee Chung, Three Guys One Puck, Jihad Raya, Shanu Baskaran, David Fergman, Elizabeth Booth, Anonymous, the most generous person on the face of the earth, Michael Hardison, Michael Kim, Nathan Cesar, Kazar, Nathan Kazar, Kelly Lepchuk, Hans Kao, Anonymous, Farzad Inum, uh, Michael Sotnik, yeah, I think I know you, Chris Pushkis, Michael, <laughs> how is this still going? Michael Gershev, Liam Connolly, Saul Garcia, John Lai, Matt Racha, Racha, I'm so, I'm Lakukaracha, I'm dying, Aaron Kramer, Eric Benzing, I, dude, it's the end of the day, I want to go to bed, Michael Nicoletti, Aaron Katzmark, Simon Turkle, Josh Bell, Raza Abbas, Brandon Pavel, Steve, I'm writing a book, he's writing, Brandon, I'm writing a book, Alyssa Schultz, Ryan Lambert, Ariane Perot, Zoe Probst, Dustin Robertson, Nathan Perfumer, Anonymous again, Bori Toth, Connor Adams, Henry Hong, Leah Mahaney. You, listen, a bunch of you said to make this a separate video and you were all right. I don't even care. Max Mayfield, sorry I missed you. Shay Sintaiti, Eric Von Overdeek, Mac Shackle, De oh my god, my mouth doesn't work anymore. Daniel Stefanovich, Ian McKay, Jason Brinkley, Sean Perry, AJ Boudwall, Anonymous, Richard Coffey, related to Paul. No, that's made up. Anonymous again, Katie Adler, Katie Adler, Big Red, hey, Joe Doyle, Kyle Van Horn, Adam Chuerta, is that Chewy? Tess Garud, Rebecca Wilkes, Luke Fisher, Ali Grant, McKinley Zavitz, Devin G Giles, Brayden Irish, and Michael Curtis. That is an incredible outpouring of generosity. I love you. I straight up love you. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable. 469 of you, nice, have donated just to me. Just to me. But I have teammates. Rachel's Raiders have teammates. You can donate to Adam Wilde. He's trying to raise $6,900.69. You can donate to Jesse Blake. You can donate to Adam's morning show co-host TJ. You can donate to Harrison Brown is also on this team. Mike Stevens is on this team. Lots of people you know and love. I really can't thank you enough. I don't care how unlistenable it was. I'm sorry if I screwed up your name. I said I would give you a shout out if you donated last night and I'm a man of my word. Woo! That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that we're recording a podcast. Brand new Panago Pizza Steve Dangle podcast later today. And after that I am going to sleep.
after taking lots of cold drugs. Once again, donate to Rachel's Raiders down below. Can we make it to 500 donors by the end of next video? I don't know, but I'm going for $50,000 and we are nearly at 30. We can do this. November 2nd, mark it down. I'll have details soon.